Thanks, Emma. <laughs> Awesome. Call the meeting for order, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call will show that six board members are present and Keith Young is attending the meeting via Skype. He will be participating in our votes. He's there by uh, our superintendent who will make sure we know what his vote is on any of the votes that we have. Um, so the first thing is uh, principal and student representative representatives information. Brandon, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, first, I want to let you guys meet Logan Rizinka. She's going to be taking my spot for when I graduate. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, first I got is a turnabout we had last Saturday that went well. Um, we ate chicken, mac and cheese, and mashed potatoes. I think everybody liked that. Um, and then... Uh, the physics trip was last Friday. They were down in the cities, and they participated in a competition where they had to build, um, I don't know, different items to where they had to be able to climb like a ramp. Um, they had to be able to do climb a tube. It was like a four-inch tube where they had to climb up it, and then a uh, popsicle dragster race. And it was all made. All the items were made out of like popsicles, sticks, popsicle sticks, and. Um, Floss and rubber bands. And um, Stephanie Madzi, Cora Bonacato, and myself took second in the popsicle tracks to race, so we got like a plaque and everything, so it was nice. Um, IRYA, they're doing Feel the Screams right now. Uh, they've been doing that for the past couple weekends. The theme right now is student zombies, so they're all dressing up beforehand and scaring a bunch of little kids. I think they're having a good time. Also, uh, IRYA has the food drive coming up November 3rd through the 14th. That's going to be in the elementary schools, um, our senior high, and uh, we're getting ready for that right now. Um, also, the class officers are in the process of picking our senior quotes, songs, flowers. We're going to send a ballot to the school so the students can choose those out of a couple options. And um, we just got done picking the Hall of Fame with all the students. I have a picture of that if you guys want to see who's nominated to. Okay. And that's all I got. All right. Logan? Anything? No. She was just going to listen. See how okay. the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> then we're on to our principals. Whatever order you awesome. would like to go. Uh, this Friday, the 31st, is the end of term one. Junior and senior high conferences are next week, Thursday, in the new gym. Um, today, our, some of our English and social studies students went with Mrs. Walls and Ms. Krebs to um, the Holocaust exhibit. We had quite a large group attend, actually. Um, Brandon mentioned the physics class field trip. Mr. Ufford has started a Golden Bear book club with senior high students. The first book they're reading is called Winter Girls by Lori House Anderson, and he has 26 members who meet uh, every other week for breakfast with him, and they talk about their book. Uh, other things, a boys cross-country team. The entire team uh, is advancing to the state cross-country meet this week. Reed Malaker took first at sections. We're very excited to send them along. And our first math meet is tomorrow. Um, conferences, again, are November 6th in conjunction with the high school and the gym for the junior high. The Nelsheen conferences are November 10th and the 13th in the Nelsheen with the teachers. Um, the junior, junior high student council put, is putting together an end of the quarter Halloween type activity on Friday. There's going to be music in the gym, um, some games, a study room. Uh, another room for quiet reading. Um, Nelsheen is also going to partake in this and they have their own um, games going on and PTO is helping out with prizes for those games. 
and a movie also for those students. Um, our Junior High Knowledge Bowl took second place in the latest competition, which is pretty good out of, I think there's 18 or 20 teams there. Um, the Student Council is also selling bowling awareness bracelets as a fundraiser. Um, and our fax class is doing an Operation Holiday Stocking with donations coming in this week and next week from the students and staff. Um, they will present them at the Veterans Day program to the VFW who will ship them off to Afghanistan or other places overseas. Okay, okay. <clears throat> tomorrow, Tuesday, October 28th, there is a Eveleth Gilbert School Board Candidate Forum. It's tomorrow evening from 6 to 7 in the Senior High Cafeteria. Mark Mewich is an Eveleth Gilbert parent and PTA member. He will be moderating. Eveleth Gilbert students will help host and run the forum. This is sponsored by the Franklin Bears PTA. They asked that I would remind and tell everyone about that tonight. <coughs> End of the marking period is Friday, so the report cards in the elementary will go out next Wednesday, um, November 5th. Um, Monday through Friday, November 10th through 14th, we will be having the Scholastic Book Fair in our activity room. This year it's Sir Rita Lott's Castle, Enter the Kingdom of Books. And Tuesday and Thursday, November 11th and 13th, parent-teacher conferences. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is visitor input. And I see we have some people in attendance. If you are on our agenda, um, you're fine. You can speak during that item on the agenda. But is there anybody here that would like to address the board on something that is not on the agenda? OK, then the next item is any agenda changes or deletions. Do we have any? I don't have any specific ones, but I do want to call attention to uh, a memorandum of understanding that I put at the table. That will be in addition to the AFSCME contract. I neglected to put it in the initial contract that I sent out. Uh, it is related to uh, forming a committee to study health care moving forward into the next year. So it will be a part of the AFSCME contract. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any other changes or deletions? Nope. Okay. Then I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Support. Moved by Leah and second by Beth. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? He said aye. He said aye. We have a unanimous vote. Um, next item is to approve the cons consent agenda. There are three items on the consent agenda. Approving the minutes from a regular meeting of October 13th. Approval of the Treasurer's Report for the check and write, second writing in October, and approval of winter coaching assignments. Uh, we have a list of those assignments in front of us. They're for boys basketball, girls basketball, boys hockey, girls hockey, and boys swimming. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move. Moved by Beth. Support. Second, Mike. Any discussion? Quick question. Sure. I see JV basketball isn't listed. Do we know why? Um, there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, the head coaches had not made a final decision as of when my deadline was for getting this on the agenda. Okay. And furthermore, we are going to wait until the next board meeting anyway because by then the season will have started and we'll have a better number, better uh, handle on the numbers so we know how many to, to hire. Traditionally, we've hired two. Um, early indications are we're probably not going to need to do that. So. And you were asking about junior high coaches, right? The JV coaches the JV. are on the list. J yeah, JV's here. It's just the junior high. It's the, the seventh, junior high. Seventh, eighth seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Any other questions on the agenda, on the consent agenda? Then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, the first item on the regular agenda is under personnel is 10.1, which is the to accept the resignation of Kara Marks, a paraprofessional. Jeff, can you give us some information on that? 
Uh, we, you had hired Kara earlier this year. She has, due to medical concerns, she needs to needs to resign at this time um, to take care of that. Um, so I guess I would recommend that we approve that and also approve posting to replace her because we still need the position. I'm old. Support. Moved by Beth. Um, support Tom. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item 10.2 is the approval of Francis Gunderson for an additional six hours per week. 10.2 uh, and 10.3 are both Francis Gunderson and Jennifer Lind are, uh, are ECSE aides um, that were hired previously, and that's early childhood special education. Um, they were hired previously, previous to, uh, they are working with four-year-olds one-on-one, um, -on -one, and we are going to try, help me out, Lynn, if I'm wrong, we're going to try them with the four-year-old program yes, that we have started. Yes, they're in the school readiness program. They're in the we school readiness, so we're going to give that a whirl, and that, that's the extended hours. Okay. I'll entertain a motion on item 10.2, the approval of Francis Gunderson. I'll move. Moved Support. by Beth. Support Leon. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote for approval. Item 10.3 is uh, the approval for Jennifer Lind for an additional 5.5 hours per week. I'll move. Support. Okay, moved by Mona. Support Tom. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now under new business, the first item, 11.1, .1, is the approval of Life Touch Photography contract. No, you want to speak to that a little bit? Just Certainly. Uh, the Franklin Elementary has used Life Touch for years. Um, a couple of years ago, we found ourselves in need of a photography company mid year. We signed, we entered into two contracts. One was with Life Touch for um, school pictures during the day things, and the other was with Enstrom Studios for extracurriculars. Enstrom Studios no longer exists. They were bought out by another company. Um, our intention was always to select one so that we're not dealing with two photography companies, companies all year. We have really struggled with um, the company that bought out Enstrom's. Our golf pictures from last spring, for instance, came at the end of September. Um, volleyball is done. The volleyball pictures had not arrived yet at the end of the season, so we are moving to go with Life Touch who has been much more responsive for our customer service needs. There's no cost to the district involved. We're just saying that, that um, as a district, we're going to go with Life Touch. And this is for three years starting next year? Yes. Correct. Okay. The, the, the two-year deal was through this, this school year. So we'll still work with the, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of what Enstrom's is now, but um, we'll continue to work through with them through this year. The uh, normally we want a three-year contract is a normal procedure for this? Yes. Entertain a motion on the approval of the photography contract. Moved. Moved by Beth. Support. Support Mona. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Another unanimous uh, vote. 11.2, discussion on UNESCO proposal. And I believe we have some guests in the audience that are going to provide the proposal. I would like you to introduce yourself, your name, and any others that come up to the podium to speak would like to do the same thing before you start so we can make a record of that. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, board chairman, uh, members of the administration, members of the community. Um, my name is Kevin Magali, and I'm uh, extremely excited to be here tonight, partly because I haven't been, uh, had the opportunity to be in the building since uh, 1985 when I was a senior at our, what was then Aurora Hoyt Lakes High School, so this is a great opportunity to, to once again uh, to visit an institution on the Iron Range. I represent a company called UNESCO, and we're uh, an organization that helps school facilities uh, with facility issues. And as you can see, we've had the opportunity to work throughout the state of Minnesota, and we've helped roughly 46 districts implement over $450 million worth of facility improvements. 
And the only reason I mention that is that uh, we oftentimes, when working with a new district, as we uh, try to earn business, we can draw upon those experiences of working with, uh, with uh, those districts in the past. Uh, tonight, uh, I've been invited to talk a little bit about my organization, but I'd also like to talk a little bit about Eveleth Gilbert Schools and the future of Everett Gilbert Schools, perhaps how you foresee the vision. And uh, as we worked with other districts in the past, we've asked three questions. Uh, where do you, you want to be and where are you today? And then ultimately, how are we going to get there? And how we at UNESCO have supported districts in the past is through to, to close that gap between where you're at and where do you want to be, especially in terms of facilities. Ultimately, uh, we'll talk through a few different things. Again, I, I do want to talk about Eveleth Gilbert Schools and how we see your situation from, a, from what I would call a, a 10,000 foot view. Talk about some ideas and opportunities, again, drawing upon those experiences of having worked with other districts throughout the state in the past. Talk a little bit about UNESCO and how we uh, support K through 12 districts. And ultimately, an offer. We'd like to earn your business, if at all possible, and an offer that we would make to you uh, as we've been asked to potentially engage. So I always start with the big picture and kind of work my way small. So as you consider big picture considerations, those things facing Eveleth Gilbert schools, you could certainly say that every district in the state is dealing with uncertain economic environment. You know, we get uh, different news from Wall Street, different news from our state uh, legislature upon how the uncertain in, in, in economic environment is going to affect us. But we do know, when I, when I talk about an uncertain economic environment, I'm talking about families and how they're putting uh, food on the table and so forth. And those certainly have to weigh into any decisions that you would make here at a school board level. I, I know that we've experienced, especially since 1985 when I graduated, much like we have at uh, Masabi East, uh, declining enrollment. And as it relates to declining enrollment, you can see as you compare with some of your peers, I would call it your peer group, uh, you've remained relatively flat. Others have had worse circumstances in terms of students they've lost. In most cases, it is not necessarily due to a declining population, but I would call it a change of demographic, a, a change of uh, the age of our population. As you can see, we've been very stable in the surrounding areas in terms of our overall population. And then uh, maybe one of the things that we can attribute part of those enrollment issues here at Eveleth Gilbert is you compare with, uh, again, your peer group, we have more students leave the district that are resident here than we have gain. And you can see that there are some net winners and losers in what I would call open enrollment. And so then we, as we work with other districts, we start to uncover those reasons why. Sometimes it's merely geographic, sometimes it's family preference, perhaps it's programming, perhaps it's your, your stamp on the education environment. Why do people choose your school district as opposed to others? Why are people choosing uh, Virginia schools now. I'd be interested to learn more about that, those circumstances. Because I do know that as you take a look at your negative enrollment status, that the majority of your students you're losing, if, you're, if you want to look at it that way, are to the Virginia School District. And the, quest, the underlining question is why? And uh, those are some questions that we've been able to help uh, with past districts. Ultimately, declining enrollment has a negative effect. It, people start looking more conservatively as opposed to positively at the future, and you can see that there is a cycle that is associated with declining enrollment. And maybe again, ultimately the one is a perceived decline in quality uh, as a cascading event of things that happened previously. Beyond declining enrollment, I know that that's probably something that you've talked about at the board level before. Part of that is open enrollment and a competition for students, perhaps at the post-secondary, uh, perhaps even some online. One of those. Uh, one of those districts to whom you lost some schools was an online school called Houston Schools. And as I consider external pressures, I also want to take a look at the macro level. Uh, utilities have not gotten the memo that costs, uh, that we're in an uncertain econ economic environment. People aren't making more money. Utilities are making more money, and the costs of utilities continue to increase anywhere between 4 and 10 percent, depending upon what type of utility you're looking at. And obviously, you wrestle ultimately with that four-letter word, that the mission of the organization, and that is teaching students and, and stake at, uh, uh, academic standards. Uh, obviously, I have not had the opportunity to engage with your district, so I'd be merely making assumption. But if I were to draw upon the objectives of the 46 districts in Minnesota with whom we've had the opportunity to work, I could summarize what they're trying to accomplish in these ways. And obviously, uh, the focus being on student performance, and again, we're trying to prepare students to be uh, competitive in a global environment. 
But as we, you know, maybe take a look at our situation here, we, we have some other things too uh, that we might want to take a peek at. And one of the reasons we've been asked here is to take a look at the physical assets, the facilities, in terms of asset protection and what we can do with a facilities of potential options. As it relates to uh, challenges, one of the challenges that we note, again, from that 10,000 foot level, is that we have some older facilities in our inventory. They're beautiful, they're monuments to the community. We've been at districts throughout the state and nowhere do they build them like they built them on the Iron Range. I can say that proudly as, a, as an Iron Ranger myself. But as we have facilities that start to age, we do know that the infrastructure within those facilities starts to cause us a few problems. And everything has expected life. Uh, whether it's a light bulb or something as sophisticated as an air handling system, everything has expected life. And as we start to approach expected life, we start to get in what I call an inverse correlation between the effectiveness and the efficiency and the cost of operation, and I might even add, add the risk of operation. So what do we, what is one of the results of that? Uh, the cost of operation. And you can, when you compare yourself with your peer group, you could see that on a dollars per student basis, you're one of the higher in the area in terms of operating and maintenance expense. Now these are areas where we typically engage and hopefully correct some of those things, but these are little flags that we raise. And of course, as you probably know, the dollars that are spent in the mechanical room rival the dollars that we spend on education. Same general fund uh, expenditures. And you can see the consequence of being on the high end of one graph is potentially being on the low end of another graph. We're maybe not spending as much money as we'd like in the classroom. So ultimately, as we took a look at challenges, I'm sure we could fill up pages, as can all districts. And certainly, as we consider facilities, we know that there are limited funds. There's only so much money to go around. And we, we presume, again, we haven't had the opportunity to spend any time in your facilities, but we could probably make an assumption that there are some older pieces of equipment, older infrastructure that might need some attention. And then ultimately, what we do for our clients is to essentially document all of those challenges talk about opportunities for improvement, and ultimately do some long-term planning. So one of the ideas, again, that has been employed by the 46 districts with whom we've worked is to make a plan. And that is to uh, not only have a short-range plan, but more of a long-range plan, something that you can use essentially in your ongoing discussion as your ongoing facility and fiscal planning uh, to, to ultimately guide your decisions. The districts with whom we've worked have used a pretty simple process. It's one where we first sync up with what you're trying to get accomplished, your goals, your objectives, how you see the vision of Eveleth Gilbert Schools over the long run. We're, what we do is we're professional services providers. We're architects, we're engineers, we're construction managers. We understand facilities and we do some assessment. And those assessments range from physical needs, especially of existing facilities, but also we, have, we can do some of the softer things too, some of the curriculum types of questions from an educational needs and how well your facilities support your 21st century initiatives to make sure that we're educating kids so that they can be competitive in the global marketplace. Ultimately from there, once we, we, we know what your challenges are, we identify options for consideration, a good, better, best approach that ultimately we hand the ball to you to make some decisions. And ultimately you decide, do we want to take action on some of those things? Do we want to kick that can down the road a little while? Ultimately, we're the guide on the side, but we can guide the options of ultimately any facility initiative. And ultimately we recognize that we don't make the decisions, you do, your stakeholders, your community stakeholders, the board, the administrative team, your staff, and students ultimately decide what is the right thing for your future. Again, we focus on, uh, what we've been asked to do is focus on physical needs in a limited engagement and specifically to take a look at a facility and perhaps a little bit kind of dipping into other facilities as well and take a look at all things facilities to identify what the challenges, what the needs are, how much dollar in repair might be necessary and potentially some funding options too because identification of a challenge or a need without, without a solution isn't necessarily a good approach from our perspective. Ultimately when we do an assessment we are engineers and we get detailed as opposed to maybe an architect who would come in and do something what I term to be a clipboard assessment maybe suggesting hey that's an old piece of equipment how much on average does that cost to replace we go much deeper we actually do some predictive diagnostics and really dig into a piece of equipment here I show the example of an air handling unit 
where we look at all components of the air handling unit, assess its condition, and ultimately assign a category of asset condition so that you know how long that piece of equipment or that piece of infrastructure will last you into the future and then ultimately help you make some informed decisions upon when the eventual replacement would take place. Ultimately, as we're looking at those needs, I talked a little bit about we also look for funding options as well. And one of those things is we look for what I would call budget neutral funding mechanisms. Things like operational efficiency and cost control, some of your levy authorities, better use of some of your letter, levy authorities to potentially have little or no impact on taxpayers and at the same time enable you to make uh, changes to your, to your capital infrastructure. I talked a little bit about the work that we've done for the 46 districts. Uh, about $450 million in Minnesota. Um, most of that has been in refurbishing uh, new building or ex existing buildings. Very little of it, the, the, the purple at the top, is, is working on new construction. Our focus as a company, our niche in the business has always been the assessment and the eventual repair and renovation of existing facilities. It's our niche in the industry. So ultimately, if we, if we do some of that planning, one of the things we always uh, suggest that a district first do before constructing a new facility is assess what they already have and consider reinvestment in their existing facilities. There's a number of reasons why. If we were to answer the whys, the whats, and the hows, we'd start with why. And we start with kids, the four-letter word kids, because we're always concerned about their achievement. And ultimately, we know the things that impact kids and how they achieve. Uh, there's a number of facility factors, those that I've highlighted in green that are research shows have positive correlation with how students perform. If you can provide the things in green, you've gone a long way to ensure that they've been the best that they possibly can. As an example, indoor air quality, indoor air environment, in fact, we know that if you are uh, introducing enough outside air into the facility, that the kids will perform better on standardized testing and they'll be less ill. At the same time, we also know that if we're giving them a comfortable environment, and we happen to be sitting next to steam radiators. Sometimes steam radiators don't provide a comfortable environment in the wintertime. The reason being, there's 212 degrees in that steam radiator. And sometimes if you're sitting next to a steam radiator, a radiator at 212 degrees, it's not all that comfortable. We know that by merely keeping students comfortable, we can again improve student performance. Ultimately, beyond kids, the reason that you uh, look to reinvest, the reason you look to do some strategic long-range planning is to first reduce operating costs. Again, we saw that we were on the higher end in terms of dollars per student. The goal would be to redirect some of that money back into the classroom. Ultimately, we were a net negative in terms of open enrollment. Ultimately, if you provide the type of environment where children excel, if you provide the type of programming, you can become even more competitive for those open enrollee students. Ultimately, we know that, that schools, the facilities themselves, are community assets. And, and, the, and the community itself takes pride in those. And we've, been, we've learned that uh, traveling the state. And ultimately, too, uh, any investment in a facility creates jobs because we know that for every $1 million worth of investment, it creates 20 high-paying jobs for a year. We also know, too, from research, tells us that they don't build them like they used to and that buildings that were built at the turn of the century and probably all the way up until about 1975, 80, were built for the long term. Uh, uh, buildings that have been built afterwards, mm, not so much. So we always enjoyed the opportunity to, re to renovate an older facility that was built with the solid craftsmanship and construction that is really hard to replicate in, in today's cost-conscious environment. And we know too that an old building is not a bad building in terms of the educational environment. You can have 21st century learning environments in an older facility. Uh, and I already t touched on this already, in terms of the dollars per your investment, uh, you know, it's, it's far less, it's a fraction of the cost to reinvest in an older facility. Now, do we advocate for reinvestment? A little bit, but at the same time, we're also responsive to our customers' needs. Uh, we want to first explore that as an option, but then also be open to the idea of new construction. So in terms of what, what would that reinvestment look like? Um, you know, we would, we would probably focus on the programming. We'd also focus on creating efficient operations, certainly a healthy environment for students at any, uh, in any construction effort that we would have, and of course to renew the facility and address some of that older capital infrastructure. I brought an example because we are dealing with some older facilities. I brought an example in southwest Minnesota called Renville County West. It was built uh, in, in the roughly 1921. And just to give you a feel for when you renovate the inside of a building, you can actually make it look more modern, and it can be aesthetic. 
So these, and none of these are, uh, we're playing uh, uh, tricks with Photoshop or anything. The differences uh, are environmental. So you can see on the right, it looks like a little bit more like a modern environment. I can tell you since we've taken these pictures, they've also painted their walls, gotten rid of some of the kind of the funky looking colors there. And now I, if I were to teleport into that facility, I would not know that I was in a 1921 building, but rather uh, I'd think I was in a, a new modern building. Other examples would be uh, some of the classrooms, just by putting modern technology into the classroom, again, with some paint and a few things like that. Again, you have the feeling of a modern facility. We even concentrate on things like acoustics, because in the music room, when I walked through that building on the left, the, the music teacher told me that uh, these were at danger, uh, dangerous decibel levels. And just with a little bit of modern, putting modern technology in, again, some sound attenuation, we were able to bring those, uh, that environment right into, uh, into alignment with code. And ultimately, a lot of the districts we meet with these days, they don't have enough cafeteria space, and they're, they, they seem like they're dark and dingy. At Renville County West, uh, they, had a, they had a dungeon for a cafeteria, and we were able to not only double the size, but also to, uh, to make it a much more modern environment uh, for them. And then, of course, you know, this, this is the stuff that we do. It's the behind-the-scenes stuff. We take older facility infrastructure and we make it modern. We put uh, brand new state-of-the-art technology into facilities. And that is our expertise and our niche. Um, now that I probably have thoroughly bored you, maybe we can talk a little bit some of our ideas, preliminary ideas, I grant you, in terms of how. How would we get this accomplished? We know in Minnesota K-12 through there are different ways that you can fund facility projects. They come out of different budget uh, buckets, if you will. And many times when you work with your professional services provider, they're kind of work on the left-hand side, and oftentimes what I would call the traditional construction process. One of the, if, if the needs are great, uh, the only way to really fund those is what I would call a referendum or bond referendum where you ask your constituents to support the school, and they get the, an opportunity to say yes or no. Uh, one of the things that we can bring to the table as an energy services company, as well as one that understands Minnesota K-12 through financing ins and out, we can also bring some other options. Maybe let me start with something called a budget neutral solution. You may have done some of this already in the district's history, but it's, it's, an, uh, it's a statute that's on the books of Minnesota, and it's an energy efficiency project. So essentially the concept's pretty simple. You already have an, ex, uh, uh, an expenditure in your operating and maintenance. And we saw on a dollar per square foot, it was on the higher end. If we can reduce that by putting in technology, infrastructure that would provide a more efficient environment, we can use those savings to ultimately pay for the project. So no net impact to your budget and ultimately no impact on your taxpayers. Uh, ultimately it creates advantages too because it sets up a public-private partnership where there is accountability throughout the construction process. And I understand that there is a construction process that we're going to talk about uh, uh, in the agenda item following me that maybe isn't so good. It's something called the construction macarena, or at least I affectionately talk. And, and the finger pointing thing starts and not everyone's doing their job and those sorts of things. Uh, one of the, when you work with UNESCO, uh, one of the things that we're uh, both financially and operationally bound to is to be accountable, not only for the year and then through warranty, but also through the term of the agreement, which is oftentimes 15 years. So that if a piece of equipment were to fail seven years down the road, you have one phone call to make, and it would be to an organization like ours and we would be responsible, again, financially and, and operationally to ensure that that takes place. So we, when we are in the construction process, we are very carefully watching the installation of that construction process because we have skin in the game. We have accountability for it for a long period of time. Ultimately, as I looked at your situation from afar using Department of Education information, we think there's an opportunity to get you more into what I would call your peer group norm and by simply doing that, you see that there's an opportunity to save dollars, real dollars in your operating expense. And we believe just by running a, a quick cash flow that that would represent roughly a $2.5 million opportunity in terms of uh, what you could do with your facility infrastructure. Again, no capital investment, no impact on taxpayers. And when I say financial risk, it's our organization as an energy services company. We would bear the risk of that improvement beyond a budget neutral solution which oftentimes doesn't get our clients to where they need to be their needs go beyond what we're able to provide out of an energy efficiency initiative you know we also take a look at your other ways of funding and i call them your your board authorities and one of which that you every year that you levy is something called your deferred maintenance levy and every year you spend it oftentimes we worked with clients in the past and we just said let's take a little that a little set that aside and we'll do more now and we'll kind of use that that we set aside as a loan payment as opposed to kind of an ongoing 
putting the fires out. And there's something that you exercise as well called the health and safety levy. And again, those are, that's your levy authority to make health and safety improvements to your facilities if it impacts positively the environment in which students and staff occupy. So I kind of ran a what-if scenario, so bear with me on this. I'm not even suggesting that this would be a project you'd pursue. Uh, I'm just merely running some numbers, and just so you can kind of what-if it. So we talked a little bit about the energy component, and you could see that, that we can probably do about two, a little bit stronger than $2.5 million in energy uh, related activity. We also know that if you just took a little bit of that deferred maintenance levy and set it aside, you know, maybe we can do a little bit of uh, uh, improvement as well to, to address some of that older infrastructure. And then ultimately, if uh, you were to uh, exercise your levy authority in terms of health and safety, you have, you have a lot of opportunity to make some real positive impact on the environment without necessarily that, that, that bond referendum, not suggesting that's a bad thing, but uh, you, you have an ability to make some impact uh, right with your authority. Ultimately, if you were to tally those things up, uh, it's roughly four and a half million dollars worth of improvements. Uh, sa uh, energy savings and the health and safety levy uh, pay for most of it. Uh, you can see there that I say that there's no capital budget used and also that there's no positive or no tax increase on, uh, on your constituents. And you know, I just took a look at your current levies and again, if you were to take a look, I'm just going to point to them. This bottom one right here is your deferred maintenance levy. And you can see we're just doing a little earmark of that, setting a little aside for a loan payment. This is your debt service levy. I could not find a debt service schedule. At some point, this might drop off. It might continue throughout that period. If it drops off, that's additional tax savings for your constituents and maybe an opportunity to do some things with your facilities as well. What I did see is maybe an opportunity is this is your current health and safety levy, pay 2015. And I kind of what if it, and I said, well, what if we can take it down to levels that are, that are based upon your square footage and your district size, the amount of money that typically districts level for what I call mandatory health and safety issues, and then we took out a loan. And then what if we said we, we'll take it right to that same level of taxation, but we'll do a whole bunch of stuff now and then pay for it over time. And I could get into a whole long discussion about how leveraging makes a lot of sense in this, in this, in this uh, economic environment. Beyond that, uh, there may be other needs that you have. I don't know what they are, but I kind of what if it again. And the one, another authority that you have that I'll mention is something called your lease levy. You already use part of it, but it, it, uh, it is a board-approved levy, essentially for instructional purposes. You want to add a program. You want to do some things with your facilities. Right now, you have $2.2 million of remaining capacity. And unfortunately, that would impact taxpayers and I kind of did a what-if scenario of if you, whoops, if you did a full uh, allotment of that $2.2 million to make improvements for your programming for educational purposes, you could see what type of impact that would have on your taxpayers. Of course, if you only did a lot less than that, you could, you could pro-rata, linearly uh, reduce that, that amount of tax impact. But as you relate to tax impact, it's always good to know where you're at. Sense of relativity, I always would argue, is important. And you can see again... Now we've got that peer group, that same peer group, and you can see how you compare in terms of taxation. You are on the low end of what you tax your constituents. And this is the average school uh, property tax per home. Ultimately, here's another number, and these are both from the Department of Revenue, and this is for pay 15. Ultimately, this is the impact on a $125,000 home. And again, if, if you own a, a $50,000 home, you might have exactly half of this amount of tax. But nonetheless, sense of relativity, you are, you've been very good stewards of your taxpayer resources. So ultimately, I talked a little bit about leveraging in this economic environment. Just bear with me a little bit more on the how. Uh, one thing we know, we still happen to be in historical low interest rates, roughly 40-year low interest rates. And you can see what they've been doing over the last four years. Now, you can also see what's starting to happen over the last, uh, over the last year, year and a half. And, and when you also consider that when you couple 40-year low interest rates or the cost of financing with the fact that in our industry, this is from the Department of Labor, uh, Labor rather, you could see that there's always been you know, what I would call escalation or inflation in construction with the possible exception of this is maintenance and remodeling in school buildings, believe it or not, where it has been flat since uh, about 2010 and we haven't seen a lot of upward pressure. Do I have an explanation for it? No, but our clients over the last 10 or the last three, four years have been experiencing very competitive construction costs. So that if you start to couple the low construction costs with that low cost of financing, 
it's what I call a perfect storm. You know, kind of a number of colliding factors. When this will uh, again align, I'm not sure. But if you were to want, if you did have facility issues that you wanted to address, now's a really good time to do so. And I oftentimes go that much of that work, that older infrastructure, I don't know what that is, but there probably is some. It's probably unavoidable. At some point, you're going to have to address that issue. And then the issue becomes, how are you going to pay for it? And are you going to take a piecemeal approach, which is far more expensive than doing something with efficiencies of scale? And ultimately, we know currently we're net negative enrollment. If, are there things, what are the board initiatives to attract families to your district to, to make it more attractive to come to Eveleth Gilbert schools as opposed to their alternatives? Ultimately, to kind of those takeaways that I'll, I'll summarize, uh, the, the whys are, there's probably a few things that, uh, that we could consider, uh, both starting with students, but also maybe redirecting some of the op operational costs back into the classroom. The what's, I don't know, uh, but you do, and that you would prioritize them based upon what you see as your vision for the school. Ultimately, I think there are some things, some creative ways to address some of those issues, and ultimately now is a great time to look at facilities. So I'm not sure if it's on your radar or not, but it's something to consider whether or not with uh, UNESCO or not. Let me just take a few more minutes uh, as a commercial for UNESCO. Ultimately, uh, our past clients, 46 in the state of Minnesota, roughly 90 if you were to go to the five-state region, almost $750 million worth of facility improvements if you were to consider the five-state region. I think they selected us for these reasons. Our mission, our focus, our experience, our expertise, our kind of our niche in the marketplace, and then ultimately our resources. We uh, have always focused on K-12 education. Never really d dallied in with anything else. It's always been education. And uh, we help districts like yours develop long-range plans. And ultimately, we help not only design them and identify what those plans are, but also to fund them. And then we implement them with a sense of accountability as well. We are a one-stop shop. At this, with that said, we're not looking to displace an incumbent engineer or architect. We work with them very much. We supplement what they do. Uh, we bring our expertise into the field, but also we work well with your existing professional services team. Ultimately, we are accountable throughout the process. You have someone for UNESCO who either does the work or is responsible for the work so that you have one phone call to make throughout the process. I call it one back to pat, one throat to choke. Hopefully things go well along the way. Ultimately, we can bring you different funding options. That does differ and differentiate from others in the professional services arena. And ultimately, we are very cost-effective, and I can get into a long discussion about how we do so, but I'll maybe just kind of summarize it in this way, uh, that, we, uh, that we have a number of factors that allow us to put projects in at the lowest possible cost. And ultimately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask one of my other colleagues to step up because I want to have him talk a little bit about the experience of uh, UNESCO. Uh, good evening. My name is Perry Schmidt, and I'm the uh, president and founder of UNESCO. And uh, I've only got one slide. The next one. Okay. There you go. And Kevin wanted me just to take a few minutes and share with you the origin of UNESCO. Uh, I started a company back in 1997 and uh, built it up for about 11 years. And then in 2008, it got to the point where we had about 45, 50 employees. Had grown it to about doing 50 million dollars worth of construction a year and thought the opportunity uh, uh, for our shareholders was to sell it, and so we ended up selling it to Honeywell. So that was six years ago. And uh, we kind of experienced maybe something uh, similar to the uh, photography company in that uh, when a large Fortune 100 company takes over and kind of puts some of their culture in place, you know, our model or our vision, our mission, we always had a pyramid type approach, and that was the top of the pyramid was always a customer. The middle layer was the employees, and if you took care of one and two, the shareholders would always be taken care of. And when you work for a Fortune 100 company, sometimes that pyramid gets tipped upside down a little bit and you got quarterly uh, reporting that you need to do to the shareholders and so forth. And so we had a good run for about six years, but I started uh, UNESCO back up uh, within the last year. We're already up to 13 employees. Um, if you look at the makeup of our employees, uh, it's about 360 years of experience. So averaging almost 30 years of experience. And so when Kevin talks about those 45 Minnesota school district projects that we did, that's with the team that's now part of UNESCO. So we've got a very lengthy uh, history of doing successful projects with school districts in Minnesota. Ultimately, we think that we have a lot of qualification, a lot of expertise and so forth, and ultimately we would like to earn the opportunity to support your vision, to ultimately help you achieve what you see 
education in the cities of Eveleth and Gilbert and surrounding areas over the next 40 years. And we'd love uh, to have a seat at the table. Our offer to you is to make investment. Much like the other 46 districts with whom we've worked, we've always made investment and we've always worked to earn their business successfully in those situations. And ours in this situation, we understand that uh, there is some question about the building that's across the street, the Manual Arts Building, and we've offered up our engineering uh, capabilities uh, to the point when I say engineering, it's engineering and architecture, it's construction management, it's those people that focus on building efficiencies. We would, uh, we would take a, an in-depth look at that facility. We'd probably also take a little peek in, at the other facilities that supported some of the supporting infrastructure such as the heating system and so forth. But we would gladly do so as an opportunity to, to demonstrate what we can do as an organization, how we can help you achieve strategic vision, and ultimately, uh, we'd love to earn your business, and we'd be humbled and honored by the opportunity to do so. So with that, um, I, I guess I would turn it over to questions uh, to the board, uh, and uh, feel free to, to shoot them at us. Any questions, comments, or anybody on the board? Okay. I think... Kevin Ray and all, our primary uh, interest uh, at this time is to look at the uh, Manual Arts Building for its uh, structural soundness, and uh, we appreciate you seeing you will look at our other areas also, but as stated here, you have a, a, a no cost for the Manual Arts Building, and uh, does this hold true also if you, say, look into all our, our boilers or where else we can bring our facility higher up to speed at less operational cost? Absolutely. Uh, it, would be, uh, it would be our honor and privilege to look at the other facilities as well to identify opportunities for improvement, a absolutely at no cost or obligation to the district. It, again, this is our opportunity to identify whether there are things, challenges, uh, objectives that you have that we feel that we could support given our professional services makeup as well as an opportunity for you to evaluate us. Are we the type of organization that you would want uh, you know, supporting that, those types of initiatives? And again, we can also, at, during that process, delve into complementary relationships with your existing professional service team, assuming that there's a satisfactory relationship there as well. But absolutely no cost or obligation to the district to look at not only the Manual Arts Building as well as uh, the other district facilities. Okay, my second question, Kevin, would be if this project does move forward, upon the uh, consideration of this board, uh, how do you employ your local uh, people that, say your local contractors or any other architectural firms or anything that are involved in it? A uh, couple different answers to that question. As it relates to the construction, as you know, Minnesota has construction laws and there are, there are bid laws. However, uh, that when we do use energy as a component of uh, a construction process, we, we can choose based upon performance, past performance, as well as value as opposed to low cost. And that brings a real great element to the construction process because now all of a sudden you can buy for life cycle cost as opposed to initial cost. Also, though, when a public bid is required, we can choose our manu uh, professional services providers, so we can choose our architects and our engineers from the local team. And that's something that we have, as a district have the ability to do without, again, necessarily choosing low bid, but you could, do, you could choose based upon qualification and past performance. And we would gladly entertain anyone on the team that has, anyone has an insight into the organization, anyone that has insight into the facilities, gladly put them on the project team. In terms of construction cost, Obviously, if you're dragging construction con uh, contractors up from the Twin Cities, they're probably not going to be as cost-effective as those that happen to be maybe stationed in Virginia or, or Eveleth. We always look local first. Where we're not able to support the, the construction process with a local contractor, yeah, then we'll go to our, our tried-and-true, trusted team. But we always look local first to ensure that, A, we're putting local people to work, but we're also being as cost-effective as at all possible. Uh, Keith right, has Keith. a question. Uh, I'd like to know uh, if your uh, free evaluation at the Manual Arts Building would include looking at all the steam lines that are underground that are old and they are deteriorating. If that would be valid evaluation also. Keith wanted to know him, our board chair is at home steam right now. Lines and steam lines, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, provided that we can uh, have access to it or get access to those, uh, we'll look at those as well. We'll look at the condition and do an evaluation of the steam line as well. Again, you know, we're not going to be digging up, um, you know, tunnels and so forth, but if there's access to them, yeah, we'll uh, definitely do that evaluation. 
Mario. Well, Mr. Chairman, at this time I would like to entertain a motion to accept UNESCO's no charge offer to perform an in-depth structural and infrastructural study to determine the viable to bring in the historic manual arts facility back to working condition for additional curriculum and or usage to be determined later. Who would support that? Is there any discussion? What was the motion again? Tom, can you restate the motion? <laughs> Repeat the motion. Can you, can you, can you, can you want to bring this over by Tom? We'll put it over by Tom, Keith. He'll read it again. Can you see him? I can see him. Okay, Keith, I'm sorry you couldn't make the meeting tonight due to circumstances, but the motion I made, Keith, is to accept UNESCO's no charge offer to perform an in depth structural and infrastructural study to determine the viability to bringing the historic manual arts facility back to working condition for additional curriculum and or usage to be, be determined later. Did you, okay. did you get that okay, Keith? Yeah, I got that. Okay. okay. I, I, I thought that was, but I want to make sure I missed all the last few words. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Keith. We'll return you to your spot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop them. Any other comments, discussion? Well, I think the fact that we have already agreed that we need to put our strategic planning committee back in place right after the first of the year, we've already determined that facilities are going to be a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. This is a good opportunity to gather some additional information. We do have one facility study, but I think it was lacking in specificity. This may give us an opportunity to learn some, some new details that we definitely need to go forward. We can make as many presumptions as we wish, but without specific details, it doesn't tell us much. So I, I'm in favor of it. Well, I agree with your comments on the facility study that we did have done. That was really an overview. Right. and didn't get into a lot of detail. Uh, one hesitancy that I have on this is we have not looked or talked to other companies that would do the similar kind of thing. And although this presentation seems, is very well put together, um, I would like to hear from some other organizations that do this kind of thing and also have our administration ex explore the possibility that we could do a lot of it on our own. I know there's no cost for them doing or taking a look at this study, but I would, I'm not comfortable with just going with this presentation without having competitors having a chance to talk to us and tell us what they could do, and without our administration having taken a look at what we could do on our own. And we do have a, a, a five-year plan coming up that we have to work on, and this kind of thing would be a part of it, but not just the manual training building. We would have to be looking at all of our facilities, and the scope of any study that we get into, have anybody do, would have to be broader than just that one building over there. So I'm reluctant to vote to go ahead with this at this time. I might change my mind down the road, but right now I think we need to have more choices. Well, I, I agree with, with your concerns. I mean, I, I certainly see where you're coming from. I guess I would point out, though, that we have to start somewhere. Granted. And the presentation was certainly thorough enough that I would be comfortable taking that information um, and not feeling an immediate obligation to go forward. We don't know until our facility, or excuse me, our uh, strategic planning group gets together what we'll be doing. Um, it's made up of administration and uh, the board, community members, business leaders. Um, so it's hard to say what the direction will be. We can't make you any guarantee that you'll go through all of this and anything will come of it. Right. 
Um, however, if we got to the point that that would be a part of it and we'd want to go forward, we could certainly seek additional information. Um, we, we have to start somewhere, and the more we put this off and the longer we wait to, to come up with at least even the beginnings of a plan, it, it, we're just going to be deeper and deeper in the hole, and we already know that we're going broke paying heat bills and on buildings that aren't currently even occupied, at least not fully. Well, couldn't we do a RFI for other firms, put up a request for information? For this project, this particular project, like the Mayo Clinic says, it's always good to have a second opinion. That's basically what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying. I have, sure. have some other presentations, Keith other offers in front of us. Keith says he agrees with that. I think it's a good place to start. I appreciate them coming up here. Um, I would still like to have at least at least one more company to look at and see what they say, or what they have. We may come back to this and say, yeah, this is the best one for us. But I think we should have the option of looking with, with one, at least one more person to look at, one more company. So not to go forward with this and wait? I, I, I think I would wait and see if we can't get somebody in the near future to uh, come up and do the same thing, make this presentation what they have. I know there's got to be more than one uh, company like this in the state who does this. And uh, who knows, we may come back to them, but I, th I think it's kind of early in the stage to be looking at just one, the very first one that comes forward to us. I think, uh, have, we, have we even contacted any of the companies? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. No. Okay. Um. And I don't see the immediate, oops. It's just something I, I, would, I wouldn't jump on it right quick like this. I, I, would, I would like to get a second opinion, that, like, like you said, Mark, and, and like everyone else has said there, I can, I can hear most of the people there. So uh, I think it, it's a good place to start, but we have to get started soon. We have to. Well, that's part of my concern. If we put this off waiting to see if there's anybody right. else interested in even looking, in the meantime, we could have sufficient information provided to us that we'll even know what questions to ask the next group. We have to admit that we're ignorant enough about many of the details that we need to go forward. We've got to start somewhere, and we don't even, we can't even ask questions because we don't know where to begin. I can't foresee any reason why we couldn't move forward with this and still put out this request for information from anybody else that wants to come in and take a look at it. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. else that you really I, I mean, I guess I'm at the stage if there's no cost and it's. What are we right. I mean, the risk isn't on us, it's on them. They're the ones putting the time and money. They fill out a little presentation, we stick it in a folder and. Well, I think we've been upfront enough you know, that right. we, no. we truly don't know what we're going to do. Where we're going yet. Um, and again, that's dependent on what the Strategic Planning Committee brings forward. But at this point, the Strategic Planning Committee has nothing to even look at to make a determination where we want or need to go. So personally, I think we need a base. We need some place to start. And if we're able to get additional firms to come in and provide us with additional information down the line, that's wonderful. But we don't even know that there are other firms out there that would come in and give us a similar kind of a situation where we could gather information and ask questions and, and not be so deep in debt that we can't get out of it. I don't know how proper this is, but why not go ahead and accept this one and at the same time look for other people to come in? That way we can compare both of them at the same time before we make our decision. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the other thing. Is, is the next company going to come up and do it for free anyway? I mean, is, is If they don't, you know? then... Right, so I mean... There's no risk. I, at this no. stage, there's no right. risk. I don't see any risk. Right. To what? But we're, it, it's nice know. to compare apples with apples if you understand where I'm coming from. Come January, you have a benchmark or something. That's right. You can say, hey, let's right. throw this out and really, this is what this company gave us. What do you guys got? You know, I mean, 
I guess I don't see well, I don't see the I don't either. I don't think we're making a commitment and I hope you're not interpreting any no. willingness to go forward as a no. commitment. So and, and that's why I made the comment that this could just get thrown in a folder for three to six months and you guys might be pushed to the sideline, but if you're willing to do that And we I don't, don't know the duration of the strategic planning right. process. It it was I was on the last one and it was a pretty lengthy drawn out process. So by the time we made a decision to do anything you guys might be onto something new. The motion, Tom, that you made, uh, if I remember <laughs> listening uh, correctly, was narrow in that the study is only for the manual training building. Building, yes. I would be more inclined mm -hmm. to go along with a study that was encompassed our whole district, not just one building. To narrow the scope to one building, I have a little bit of a problem with. Because we need to know district wide for this planning, strategic planning that we're going to be doing. And the motion, as narrow as it is, I can't support. Well, I, I guess I asked the question if they would be willing to look at our other uh, uh, components of the, in the district. So right, he did that, ask could that. Be, that could be made to motion. It could so also include any district wide. District, this district. district. Our district, any, I guess I'll put up any our, our study our that, we would, plant, that the board plant. would want to look at in addition to the uh, manual arts building. I think it would be closer to what we all anticipated the original facility study would be. Yeah. Well, we knew that facility study was going to be a very broad uh, yeah, go ahead. It, it wasn't going to be in a lot of detail. Yeah. We need more detail, and yes, this is do. a start at getting it. I mean, not to state the obvious, but that isn't their proposal. They were asked to look at one building. I mean, would they? They've you know, already yeah. indicated that. Yeah. Sure. You know, first of all, the process that you're going with and kind of struggling how to move forward. You know, that's what we face day in and day out with every district. Mm -hmm. So it's not unique to you guys here. And you know, our proposal was based on discussions looking at one building. We'd actually prefer to look at all of them. And the reason is, is that there's economies of scale, especially with the central heating plant. And you know, keep in mind, you're not getting a full, uh, detailed engineering. This is uh, you know high level, but we are going through all the equipment. We're going to look at what's working, what's not working. So it'll be very, very helpful information. But it's not six months of auditing we're doing. You know, it's probably more like six weeks to eight weeks. And so economically, we can, you know, it makes more sense for us to do it as long as we're here to be looking at all the buildings. Um, you know, our guys typically work long hours. They're here early in the morning. We ask for keys so we can stick around and see how the buildings operate in at night. And so we can do that pretty efficiently. So, you know, we'd prefer almost to look at all the buildings versus the one, but we knew that that was, you know, a priority when we had mentioned the one. I'd be more inclined to, if you guys are willing to just give all access and... Would you like to amend your motion? I can amend it to uh, include all of our buildings. The whole and physical plant. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's a better move. I think it's a lot better. I think everybody would be more willing to vote for this to, to go ahead with this than have it narrowed down to one particular building. I, I agree with you, Mark. I mean, there should be everything. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yes, yes. you're doing yes. fine. Um, and then the only other thing I need a little clarification on is we are going to be open to other groups doing this kind of a study. We're not limiting to just this one. If somebody nope. comes to us in two, two weeks and wants to do the same thing, yep. we will be agreeable. Fine. Absolutely. At no charge. At no, At no charge. charge. Yeah. Yeah. The same yep. apples to apples, right? That's right. Apples to apples. Yeah. Okay. I say we call Kathy, it Kathy, do you have the motion? I was actually going to get it from Tom later because it's yeah. so lengthy. I probably don't have it exactly as it should be. Okay. I can but I do have the amendment to, to say that the motion would include all of the all buildings. All of the buildings. Not Correct. only the manual arts building. Just not, uh, not only the manual arts building. To include all of our buildings. Anyone else have any comments? Any questions to ask? One comment. Thank you, because I know you're the one who went forward and sought out the information, and I appreciate that you guys were able to come and give us such a thorough presentation so we understood what we were looking at, and I'm hoping this passes so we can look forward to having some information in our hands. Any, yeah. any other comments?
Then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Maybe just with one parting comment, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, we look forward to supporting the district. We, we only went through our capabilities in a little bit of uh, detail and so we're just handing out some books to talk a little bit about some of our past clients, uh, some of the things that we do during the process so that you can understand how we approach master facility planning. And then my second comment is you guys picked a heck of a night to come to a board meeting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate your attention. That's Thanks again. We'll take a little break here for just until we have they have a chance to leave. Something we said. Yeah, it must have been something you said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. We'll wait. Thanks again. We appreciate well, your you time. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I know we got a little longer than the line for a board meeting, so my apologies there, but they appreciate the opportunity. You, you don't really know before. how long our board meetings last. This could be a short one. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Just leave it right there. Okay, we're back to item 10.3, discussion 11 .3. on 11.3, discussion on construction projects. Um, <clears throat> at the last meeting we had left off uh, in the air about payment number five. We had, uh, Ryan had said that he we were going to look into possibly amending that payment. Uh, I did speak with Ryan at length about where we are today. Uh, Ryan, you want to step up there? We're, uh, we had agreed to a few things. We we're going to see if that's agreeable to the board and and see if the amended one is something that we should approve at this time. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we uh, met. We were talking about uh, two items in particular. Um, one had to do with the condition of the quality of the work that was done on the roof in Gilbert. Um, I'll start there. Uh, since our last meeting, um, the warranty inspector actually came last Friday, and myself, the principal, superintendent, representatives from Lency, Nelson Roofing, the warranty inspector, and his supplier uh, were all on site uh, walking the roof. Uh, two conclusions were made. Uh, really from the warranty inspector uh, that uh, there's two different um, courses of action that need to be taken, one for reinforcing the roof, one for uh, taking care of um, fastening those uh, pieces that were of concern up there. So uh, Nelson Ruffin was actually working on that today uh, after meeting on Friday. Um, I don't know if they've completed all the work. Uh, I, knew, I do know they were on site working on it today already. So. Um, that's being addressed. If those are done to the satisfaction of the warranty inspector, they will provide the warranty and sign off on the work um, as specified. So that's the first concern. The other has to do with, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the schedule. And uh, if you remember, there was a lot of work that was looking to be done over MEA weekend. Um, a couple of items there. Uh, I think they've made good progress on the windows. Um, there's right now three classrooms, um, I believe, remaining that have work to be done, if I recall, on the third floor. And then as far as the large units, it's the music room and the library that will be remaining after that. It's just the small win windows that you see, uh, like in the third floor at the um, end of the corridors, those items there that wouldn't be in public areas or 
classrooms, so to speak. They would be in public areas versus classrooms. So I think they're making good progress there. Um, the, the work on the security cameras, uh, the security work ended up having a hiccup. Um, it hadn't, had nothing to do with actually the folks under contract. It had to do with coordination with the school district's security vendor. And security vendor did not have all of the items that he needed to complete the work on his end. Um, so that work for uh, the doors at the Franklin, I know, uh, has not taken place that I'm aware of. And I don't know if the date's been set for them to return. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, um, so that work has not been completed yet. Um, hopefully they have what they need tomorrow and they can finish that piece of it. Um, and that has to do with... Uh, Actually, the camera work as well, if I recall. That's part and parcel to that work. Um, the work in Gilbert at the canopy is probably what um, I, I'm most concerned about. The block, I'm being told, is still on back order from the supplier. Uh, the ceiling materials, which were uh, supposed to go up uh, for that canopy, uh, turns out they, had, they were one box short, which should have been looked at ahead of time, but it wasn't. They uh, are waiting for that one box to come. It needs to all be installed at the same time, so that's why that ceiling work hasn't been completed yet. Uh, from what I understand, the painting was uh, looking at um, taking place last Friday, uh, um, and I know they hadn't been there today yet, so I'm not sure what had happened there. Uh, out of all the things that we discussed, the canopy work in Gilbert is what I'm most disappointed in. Uh, they reacted quickly and are working uh, hard on the roof, um, from what I could tell. Um, I think the folks doing the window work um, have made good progress. Really, it's that canopy right now that is of most concern to me out of all the items out there. How about so, the doors in Gilbert? Those they completed, and that was one item that became an unforeseen condition um, that we weren't aware of. When the doors were replaced at one point, there was uh, additional structure that was added to the lintel up there. Um, it wasn't on the original drawings. When they took the hollow metal frame down and discovered it, they, uh, they lost about an inch and a half in the opening. They had to cut the frame down, which they can do. Uh, however, the glass needed to be reordered. But the glass was reordered. It was put in. It's all installed today. Even the glass in the doors? Yep. Well, I know the, the windows that were in question were, the, were up above. school today. Yeah. Mm. It was still boarded up when I drove <laughs> by at quarter to four. No, it's, it's, it's in. It's in. It's in this morning. It's in this yeah. morning. I'm talking yesterday. I'm, I didn't drive by yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how, did, how did the glass in the doors get affected by the... The opening shrunk by an inch and a half because of the lintel that was added at some point. Wasn't there like windows above that door? No. There's windows that shrink. Yeah. The opening for the window. I'm talking about like the, the windows on the, the door doors themselves. That's in. It's in the other day when I was there, there was only one pane and a bunch of shims holding it. It's in, in today. So, what was, I mean, why wasn't that finished over MEA? But uh, I guess that's my conversation. All right, question is there's the physical panes in the door that mm -hmm. just had a piece of shim in there holding it after. I mean, did we not have all the glass that week? I, I'm not sure when exactly that was finished. I know they were working on it over MEA. I was there both Thursday and Friday. Um, I, I can't speak to when exactly that was completed. I don't know. I know that it's done now. Um, so I'm sorry, I don't have that specific information. Do you have other items on the list? Can you, yeah, can you just yeah. address, uh, address the, yeah. the payment, the yep. payment so adjustment? The, uh, the application for payment, after, discuss, after looking, talking through the progress and discussing the line items out there, uh, we've revised that uh, down. Um, to more accurately, accurately reflect uh, that corrective work that we talked about. Uh, should that need to be done? Um, so I do have a revised application for payment um, that I can propose, uh, which reduces what they had requested by a little over uh, $10,000 or so. We basically zeroed out the request from the roofer. We uh, cut in half the request from the electrical contractor uh, due to the fact that their work wasn't able to be completed um, and then did the same thing with general conditions from the uh, from the general contractor 
So, so what's right. the bottom line? Bottom line, uh, we had previously, uh, we're at 115,615, which leaves 100, and, uh, I'm sorry, which leaves 227,542 remaining. So what you're saying is we should release the 115,615? That's what I'm more comfortable with, yes. That's what I'd recommend. Mr. Chair, I'd like a motion for the board to approve payment number five with a reduced cost of 115000 and... 650 650 I'll entertain that motion. Unless you have other questions before we make the motion of Ryan on any of the other issues that he went through. I guess I will just make one comment. Uh, when Superintendent Gary withheld payment, definitely didn't get the, con the attention of the uh, contractor that I went by that Gilbert school two days later and they were working on it already. So I agree with the, uh, the roofing is piece especially. I think the window contractor has been working hard all yeah. along. I don't have anything to complain about unless yeah. you know of anything was well. I think they've been working hard all along. Um, like I said, the the manpower shortage or not, the guys that are here are working. Uh, I agree. The, the roofing piece, uh, I got their attention. I think it's unfortunate that that had to happen mm -hmm. get to get them moving. So we started that in July. Yes. There's no excuse for that. Anybody have any other questions, comments? Then I'll entertain a motion on releasing a payment of 115,615. I'll make the motion. Moved by Leon. Keith supports. Any further discussion on the 115, 615 payment? Only it's two guys going to take this to get their attention for the contractors. Mm -hmm. It could have been, if they were done right the first time, we wouldn't have this. We would have already. That's my only comment. Anybody else have a comment? <laughs> Planning and on time would have been a better scenario also. Well, yeah, I think we all agree. Then all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do you have anything else, Ryan? No, let's see if any other questions are me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then item 11.4 is update discussion on education innovation partners. I'm going to ask Mr. C and Mrs. Sebo, Mr. Sorry about that. <laughs> Help me out a little bit on this one, but we uh, we have talked about uh, EIP in the past. We, we uh, a couple meetings ago we entered an agreement with them for for another year. Uh, what I want to talk about tonight is the telepresence that we have talked about in the past. Um, we are <coughs> they're in the planning stages right now. We're we are we're kind of having to make commitments um, as far as schedules go, what we're going, what we could offer, what we could take, what kind of equipment we need, stuff like that. So where we're at right now is when's our next meeting? Is it on the twenty? It's in the middle of November, <coughs> and it is a planning meeting where the the schools at the table are going to have to make a commitment, and the commitment is right now to change our bell schedule and for us we would need to get on a common bell schedule I believe it would be we'd our high school would start 10 minutes later and go 10 minutes past where we are right now so it's it's pretty much a wash as far as time goes it's just pushing the schedule 10 minutes uh, so it isn't terribly uh, a huge decision for us um, what we are planning on doing in this initial year if we if we move forward with this is to offer classes such as Spanish 3, which we have typically not had enough kids to offer, or Calculus, another, just a couple options. We're not planning on going real big with this to start with, we just want to try a few things. Uh, another avenue that we could take is uh, all of our community colleges are involved in this project as well, and are uh, going to be sending out those classes. Um, perhaps some of our kids that we lose to PSEO may be more inclined to stay if we offered that. Uh, but that's as far as the scope goes is what we're going to, what we're planning on doing at this point. So I guess what I'm looking for at this point is uh, 
kind of affirmation from the board that this is something that we should be pr pursuing. Um, if this is something that we're interested in, if we, if yeah, I mean, if you guys tell me tonight that no, we don't want to do this, we'll we won't sit at the table anymore. I mean, we've spent Danette in particular spent a ton of time uh, at meetings and whatnot going through this. Uh, and the reason I'm asking tonight is is this is moving fairly quickly at this point. They're the, they're, they want schedules done pretty much by the end of December. So. Is participation kind of still fully there from all of the districts that were ini uh, initially involved with this? <coughs> More yes. districts have gotten involved. So there There's were districts who participated in that rough grant um, to help cover the costs of the equipment for, okay. for telepresence. Since then, uh, all, most if not all of the other districts have said we we need to be a part of this too. So for us, it looks to me like we have more to offer than we have needs to take in, but it would allow us to consistently offer calculus um, to bring back Spanish 3, which we haven't been able to offer because we don't have enough students signed up for it. So it could potentially be a great benefit to us. In addition to offering a handful of kids at a time, it's limited the number that we can put into these classes, um, but it would offer those students some unique electives that they don't have access to right now because we don't have the staff. And we don't have to make it any further monetary commitment. It's just on a schedule. Well, at this point, schedule at this point. Um, as there's Keith with his phone again. <laughs> Hard to train. You can't shut it off. <laughs> um, the monetary piece that's going to come in the the. The cart for the telepresence itself is about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. There are also some uh, network upgrades that we're going to have to do. We anticipate at this time that EIP is going to pay for those the, the equipment. Uh, we just don't know for sure right now. They are applying for a grant through the IRRB and they are anticipating at this point that they're going to get it, but they don't know for sure. They won't know until their December meeting. Uh, is that what you understand, Mr. Smith? Correct. Yeah. Um, but if that goes through and everything goes according to plan, we will be up for about $120,000, which will more than cover the costs of what we need to operate. So I think we have to continue to participate. I agree. Yes. I do have a question for Mr. Heitzman. The 10-minute change with both ends of the high school schedule, how is that going to impact our transportation? Well, that was my, my question for Mr. Carey was, is, is this a global district-wide change of bell schedule? Or what's the That's what I was going to ask about how it's going to affect. We haven't looked at the uh, effects of how that's going to affect the other campuses yet. We, it's something that we're going to do real soon. But I'm just telling you that's what the effect is going to be. In order for us to participate, we have to do that. It basically just shifts the whole bell schedule 10 minutes. We're not extending the day, we're shifting it by 10 minutes. Are, are the other schools? All the schools in will this will have to get on the common bell schedule. He's, uh, he's talking about the other schools oh. in our district. And the answer to that is yes, they're all going to be affected that, that by 10 minutes. Families to some mm -hmm. It could. Will we're that affect overtime scheduling? Is that, are we going to be able to make adjustments with? Because I know we've got folks right now that are on. It, it's something that we need to, we will study further and yeah. I'll have more information for you because we just don't know. This but we're not lengthening no, the just, day. We're no, just, just adjusting. We're, moving. we're just sliding. Right. So we can just very easily adjust. adjust. I, I say easily. Because um, he'll have to do it. I, I adjust <laughs> the elementary and the junior high schedules. So we're not completely and totally rearranging everything. No. I agree with Beth. We have to go forward. I think we've been supportive of this for quite a while, um, hoping that it was going to come to fruition, that we were going to be able to do this. And I, I, I think it would be crazy to pull out at this stage. Do you need a motion to that effect? Or just the consensus? No, I was just looking for consensus at this point. I mean, there's... Absolutely. Yes. We are correct in that we do have a consensus. Everybody's in agreement with moving the 10 minutes? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else on this? Go ahead and move forward. Pardon? Go ahead. Next item.
Item 11.5 is approval of the ASME contract for 2013 through 2015. Um, you could probably speak to this as well as oh, anyone being the lead uh, negotiator. A little bit, but then I'm going to ask you to fill in some blanks. Okay. Um, you're all aware we had the mediation session last week. Uh, the mediator was here for eight hours? Yeah. Um, I think it went, it went very well. Uh, in addition to the usual people who have involved who from the ASME side of the, the table, uh, Steve Georgie was present. Uh, I'm not sure what his title is with ASME, um, but I think his presence being here helped us get a, come to a settlement in the one day of mediation. Um, you've all received, I believe, a copy of the new contract and of the uh, tentative agreement, uh, which just speaks to the dollars of cost in, in a broad sense. Um, what our what we did in the mediation was um, tell the AFSCME group that we had so much money on the table in our offer and we asked them to consider how they would like to see that placed in the in the contract and after several hours they came back with a, a counter proposal which is the tentative agreement um, asking for um, a little change in the health care contribution and wage increases. Uh, but the other open items that were still remaining going into mediation, there were three other language type issues, those were dropped. So the two items, uh, the wages and the insurance were agreed upon. Um, the dollars they came back with were slightly higher than what we had in our proposal, but certainly within reason. And it was not an issue or a reason to uh, not agree to this tentative agreement. And if we approve that tonight, uh, they're meeting later this week to vote on it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And both parties have to approve, approve the tentative agreement or it, it does not go into effect. You want to go through any of the details, Jeff? Well, I think I think I, I think it's been outlined. I mean, I, I, we've had several meetings, and everyone's aware that I mean the 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 offer that we had on the table was for a two and two percent in the first year and two and a half percent in the second year, and they decided that they wanted to rearrange that so it was all in the second year. So there's nothing in the first year, and all of that is in the second year. And that was by their choice. By their choice. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, like I said at the beginning for the meeting I draw your attention to, I didn't send you last week, was the uh, memorandum of understanding that's related to health insurance. Uh, sometime before next June we need to come up with uh, an agreement, whereas we only offer one, a single health care plan, as per our insurance provider. And uh, they are equally interested in, in getting that, so we will form a board committee and with uh, myself and, and a few of them, and we will start studying that issue in January. Any other, any questions on the settlement? One comment, uh, we, we stuck to uh, the two and a two and a half percent, which, which it averaged out to about two. Typically, in the, in the past, we've always let them vote on first before we have passed it. But if the rest of the board is comfortable with doing it like this, uh, I will vote that way also, uh, because it's it stayed within the ramification, not the ramifications, but the the guidelines that we wanted on the contract as far as monetary. And I I I've got no problem with it. I think it's I think it's a good contract. Good job. The reason we are voting Keith tonight on it and not waiting until they ratify it is to give our administration time to do what calculating they have to do for a back pay. If we waited two weeks or more until our next meeting, it would really tighten up that window that they have to do their work. Okay. So we want to give them as much time as possible. Yeah, I understand that. I just, it's still, in the past we have, but I understand the reason why, that's why I said, yeah, we'll all go for it. And it's tentative pending their approval anyway. So I will make a motion that we approve the tentative agreement reached on October 23rd uh, with the ASME unit. I support. Okay. Any discussion? Then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously. Okay, superintendent's report and I information. A, I had a few things here for you. One, I, just an update, you know, about a month ago we had agreed to, we were having lots of uh, problems with our internet and, and all of our buildings. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, the board agreed to do some, some access point upgrades. Um, we have, all of them are currently installed that we said we're, that we purchased. Um, <coughs> any of you guys can disagree, but when I walk down the Gilbert campus now, I get nothing but high fives. I mean, they're, they're happy. Um, reception's lots, lots better in the elementary now. I know we are still having some issues in the high school, and that's related to um, not so much that we don't have it installed. It's just not working properly. So they are working on that, and I would assume that that would get done real quick. So it, it, at least initially seems like that was a uh, the right fix for, for our problem. Um, MSBA conference is on January 15th and 16th. Um, being new, I'm not sure what our past practice has been. Um, so I'm looking for some input. What do you want me to do? What are we not supposed to do? How many go? That kind of thing. Anyone who wishes in the no. past. In the past, yes. any, any board member that would like to go. So if you want to go, should you con contact Kathy by... I would just say we have an issue with the election coming up. You want to wait until that's who over? Will, you know, who will be... Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, if I'll there's anybody who's not running, let me know right now. As soon as you I would like to vote. Put me down also. January 15th and 16th. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, another thing, uh, we have a number of uh, building and grounds issues that need to be addressed um, in the soon to near future. So I would like to call a uh, building and ground committee meeting. If you can get your calendars out. Uh, three of you that are appointed to that committee, but everyone is always welcome. Um, I'm in the wrong year. Uh, I'm looking at next week, which is the first full week in November. How about? Uh, Just remember, Tuesday is Tuesday's election, election day. day. <coughs> How do you feel about Monday night, the third, at five o'clock? Who are the three that are on the? Keith. I think I am. Are you one of them? No, not building the. I don't remember. I think Mark, you are. I might. I don't know. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think so. Well, I think you're at the last one that I showed up at. <laughs> well, everybody can show up at. Right. Yeah. That you could easily Which one avoid. Are you to? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Better for you. I can't do Thursday. All right, so I got uh, on my list. I got Leon, Mark, Mona, and Keith. Oh, okay. Okay. Wednesday's fine with me. Monday would be okay too. But I'll Wednesday's I'll fine. Go with Wednesday. Would Wednesday better for me? What time? Hang on. So we're looking at Wednesday the fifth. Yes. Wednesday the fifth at five o'clock. Okay. Keith, can you do five? Or do you want to do five thirty? I can do anytime when I'm sitting at home. Oh, right. that's right. Five o'clock. <laughs> Five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Then uh, the other one I want to bring up. Uh, we have we have to start going through our policy, and I need a policy committee meeting. And I wish I would have looked at the <laughs> list I was just <laughs> in. <laughs> Are there any other committees? <laughs> Bring the whole list. <laughs> yeah, Mark, maybe one day when you have some spare time, can you take a look at this thing in front of this 
desk that keeps creaking like it's 90 years old. <laughs> it's kind of annoying to the this other corner is no easy. board members alongside. The, the braces are missing. All right. uh, then they, they cut it to... Uh, yes, please. <laughs> the old man over there just can't handle it. <laughs> Yep. Committee of the whole. So I don't know. You want to do that same night? Do you want to choose a different night? Different night. Different night. Please. Okay. <laughs> What's good for people? Other than the second Wednesday of November. Wednesdays are not good. Wednesdays are not good. Okay. Uh, did someone say Thursday the sixth? I will not be here. Yeah, I have a commitment that evening. Not good. Though, so. Monday the 10th is probably a board meeting. Yep. The 11th? Veterans Day. Veterans Day 12th is not good for Beth. 13th? 13th would be fine. Yeah, I know. Why is Thursday the 6th not good? Section swim meet. Section swim meet. All sections I have another commitment. Is everybody going to make the welcome. board meeting on the 10th on that Monday? Can right. we do it after the board meeting? Yes. You want to do that? Yep. Since we're having trouble we finding a date. We can. In the first two Tenth. weeks. As long as we're here anyway. I promise to keep the tenth short. That's for policy. That's for policy. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Board member topics. Mike, do you have any? I have nothing this time. I'll go second. I don't have any either. Tom? No, um, no comments this time. Beth? Um, I just have one question, and I'm totally curious, because I have no idea. Um, I am just questioning the legality of voting through Skype. Was that looked into beforehand? Yes. Okay. And we're good. Everything's kosher. I checked with the MSBA. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That answers my question. <laughs> there was actually a statute passed two years ago to accommodate situations like this. Okay, yep. All right. Speaking of Skype, Keith, do you have anything? Uh, no, unless uh, Beth wants to come and push me around in a wheelchair or something. <laughs> I've got enough to do, thank you. <laughs> I've got a protest, and I've got a scooter, so what do you want? <laughs> I'll take you to Lake Gorbigon. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Leon, do you have anything? No, I have nothing. Mona? No. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So hard. Meeting adjourned. See you, Keith.